Hey, question for you. Do you like meatloaf? I'll be honest with you, I didn't for the longest time. It's always dried out, it was always flavorless, it was just bleh, nothing special. But good news, today on Fatty's Feast, I'm showing you how to make the most amazing, flavorful meatloaf that's wrapped in bacon and smoked to perfection. Welcome in to Fatty's Feast, where we make the best food you'll ever eat without leaving your backyard. My name is Josh, I'm so glad to have you here today. I was gonna film this prep work part outside, but it's a little too windy for my taste. So I got the smoker coming up to temp. We're gonna make the meatloaf inside where it's nice and warm. So starting off, I got one pound ground pork, one pound ground beef. I used to use only ground beef in my meatloaf, but I think the pork adds a different texture and flavor. And also you can use whatever amount you want. Just make sure it's equal parts beef and pork. Let's start out with our dry ingredients. I'm gonna do about three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs, salt to taste, freshly ground black pepper to taste, and you know me, I'm gonna use a lot of it. I'm sick of working my arm, let's do that. Teaspoon of oregano, teaspoon basil, and my secret ingredient, one teaspoon cayenne pepper. Now, if you don't like the spice, you can keep the cayenne pepper out. You can cut it back, whatever you wanna do. You can also use red chili flakes as well. Right here, I got about a half of a medium-sized green pepper and three quarters of a medium onion. Throw that in. Healthy spoonful of garlic. Tablespoon or two of Worcester sauce. About two thirds a cup of milk. And lastly, one egg right on top. Now let's get in here and mix this all together. Hello Jameson, would you like to help me mix? Now you gotta get in here and do this with your hands. There's no other method, okay? You can't spoon it, you gotta just get in here. I'm looking at this, I think it's a little liquidy still. I'm gonna add a bit more breadcrumbs. That's looking a lot better. When I pick it up, it doesn't necessarily fall apart. Right now, we got a ball that'll stay formed. I'm just gonna take this and put it in my fridge for now. So next we're gonna make our bacon weave. I used to think making bacon weaves was the hardest thing ever, it's really not. If you don't feel like making a bacon weave, you can always just drape the bacon over the meatloaf, that's what we've done in the past. But a bacon weave just makes everything better. It looks so pretty. For this, I just have one package of normal bacon. Doesn't matter what you use. I'm just gonna do this right on my countertop because I don't care. So we're gonna take half our bacon. We got about 17 pieces here or 18. And we're gonna start laying them out right close next to each other as possible. Probably gonna use about seven to eight pieces here. Actually, we'll go with nine. That looks perfect. Might be a little much, I don't care. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take every other one and I'm gonna drape it back about halfway. Not that one. Just like that. No, I'm gonna do eight, Never mind. I'm gonna go ahead and place that like so and drape it back over. Just like that. Then I'll take the ones that weren't flipped before, do the same thing. Nice and tight, that's what she said. And there we go. You can already see the weave coming along, right? This is literally all this is. Now let's start on the other side. As you can see the ends, some of them don't really uh, get to the end. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be weird. Put one more down here. And one more down here. A little off, but that's okay. Then what I'm gonna do is put some butcher paper down right on top. I'm just gonna take my rolling pin and sort of roll it out a little bit so it all sticks together. Not too much. Perfect. Now I'm gonna just take this carefully, put it on my butcher paper, which I guess I could have done in the first place, but I'm stupid. And then we'll take our meatloaf, throw it right on here. It's holding its shape pretty well. I'm just gonna try to shape it to how I would like it. Nice log of meat, that looks delicious. And then we're just gonna take our butcher paper. We're gonna use that to roll this bad boy up. Nice and tight. And you can spread it out more if it's sort of coming out the end. And there we go. So it's all rolled up. I'm just looking around making sure everything's covered in bacon. This is gonna be my presentation side. So I'll take this. I'm just gonna seal these ends up. And then what you can do with these spare pieces of bacon I have, I might just do that, just to keep those ends in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, tell me you wouldn't eat that right now. And just to prep it, I'm gonna throw it on my Grillaholics grill mat right now. So it's ready to go on the smoker. And she is freaking beautiful. Let's get the smoker up to temp and put her on. 
and we're gonna put her right about here. Throw my other probe right here, and I'll throw a probe internal right about there. A little bit windy, so the fire is gonna be sort of a pain to maintain as always. Just keeping this open for a second so these pieces can catch a little better, get some wind in there, or some air, I should say. So I'm using oak wood, but I'm gonna throw a piece of maple on top of this as well. I should have learned my lesson by now, but I'm gonna say it. I think this is gonna take between three and four hours. Don't quote me on that, we'll, we'll see, because it never works out that way. I'm thinking about three and a half hours to actually cook this thing, and then another half hour after we glaze it. And we're only cooking this to 165 internal. And we're gonna glaze it once it hits about 155, 160 internal. And we're going to be maintaining temps between 250 and 275. I'm gonna let it go for about an hour, we'll come back and we'll flip it. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this may be the scariest wind conditions I've ever smoked in. Even, I've smoked in blizzards and shit like that. This, this is terrible. There was one point I was sitting there, I thought my canopy was gonna just pick up and go away. So needless to say, fire's been sort of a pain to maintain, especially with backflow coming in through the chimney. That happens, it sucks. But we haven't been too out of control, so let's take a look at it. So first off, our temps, 324, right about here and then 256 down to the stack. So I'm trying to, you know, 275, that's probably the average. And then 85 degrees internal so far. Okay, so first let me get this out. I figured this bacon was gonna peel off, so I'm just gonna throw a toothpick in here. Hopefully hold it in. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll throw another one in for good measure, why not? So I'm gonna use my Grillaholics gloves here. Just give it a nice flippy do, whatever you wanna call it, flippy do, I don't know. And let me throw the probe in on this side. Well, if I was smart, I would have put the bacon tucked under like I did on this side, but it's gonna be fine. And this is what I'm dealing with, just a lot of sort of dirty smoke. I had to really load this up to get the fire going because it just keeps backfeeding and making a lot of smoke. Another thing I hate doing is keeping this door open the entire time, but I haven't really had a choice because if I uh, close it, it smothers it. Literally in the time it took me to bring the camera back here, my fire almost went out. That's, that's the win for you. I already got some eh, smoke pushing out. It is what it is. So where I have the probe now, it's reading 92 degrees internal on this side. I'm just gonna keep working it, and there it goes again. I'm just gonna keep working at it, so hopefully it doesn't go out, and then I'll see you back in a few. This is literally what I've been dealing with. It's swell. But that's what happens when you burn real wood. You gotta just make do. All right, we're three hours in, let's make our glaze. I'm putting this on the top of my firebox here so we can warm it up. First, I got some Stubb Spicy Barbecue, my favorite. And we're just gonna eyeball this. It's probably about a half cup. Next, a little bit of Worcester sauce. And then if you're not diabetic like me, you can use brown sugar. I'm gonna use honey, if it'll ever come out. Oh, it's a little bit crystallized. But that's why we're gonna melt it down. That's hot. We'll just take our little brush here and we're just gonna whisk this together. We're gonna let this come to temp on our firebox. It's a pretty good viscosity. I'll just stick my finger in and try it. That's what she said. Pretty good. Nice tangy flavor, some sweetness. That'll be delicious. I'll add a little bit more honey to this, just cause, I'm trying to spike my blood sugar. We're looking at 152 internal, so about another 20 minutes before we glaze. And now we're at 160, let's take a look. So it's looking really nice, but if I rub this here, I got a little bit of dirtiness on this thing. And that's gonna happen because we've had a little bit of a dirty fire. So I'm just gonna sort of dab it off, just try to get some of that soot off there. And hopefully it's not overly smoked. But that's that's what we got. I mean, it's not terrible. Especially because bacon's very fatty, obviously. You're gonna have that stuff that sticks to it. Let's take a look at the underside here. Oh, yeah, the underside doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna take my glaze. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of this. But I'll just try to dump it on. Nice quick fashion like so. We're gonna get it all over this bad boy. So I'm just gonna run down, that's okay. That's definitely okay. There we go. That looks perfect. So I'm bumping up the temps a little bit to about like uh, 300, 325, just to let that glaze set. And what I'll end up doing probably is glazing it one more time with the rest of it. So I'll let that set, glaze it again, and then we will bring it inside. I'll probably have a little bit left over to coat my meat. It's hot. So I'll see you in a few when we do our taste test. All right, we're back in the house with this bad boy. Let's cut into it. So as per usual, my camera didn't work for a second. So I wanna show you here. 
how juicy this bad boy is because I already filmed the outro. But look at the juices coming out of that. Like that looks so goddamn good. Look at, t- just look at that. It's dripping. So let me cut a piece off here. Here we go. Let's give this a try. I got shit falling on the floor. Oh my God. Smoky, flavorful, a little bit spicy. So good. Now, as many of you know, I'm not a huge fan of bacon that's not crispy, but I want to point something out. If I try to pull this bacon off here, it's sort of like, it's sort of binded to the meat. Like it's very hard to do. It's coming off a little bit there. Like if I go down here, try to pull it up. It's, it's really sort of tough to pull off. So that bacon weave does a, a, just an amazing job. Now, I do want to let you know, I did end up using the rest of the glaze on this meatloaf because it did take an hour for it to get to 165. So every 20 minutes or so, I just put some more glaze on. And I also want you to know, we did hit a stall around 163. It actually dropped back down in temp to like 159, 158. So that was a little weird because it's ground beef and I didn't really expect that, but something to keep in mind if you're going to do this recipe at home. Don't get too concerned. It'll get right back up in temp very quickly. So that being said, I'm going to go eat this entire thing probably. It is what it is. I'm fat. But I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Fatty Feast. If you did, please smash that like button. It's free. It costs you nothing. And it gets my content out to more people. If you want to check out more videos of me smoking stuff, there's a video right here. I guarantee you're going to love it. And right here, there's a playlist of me smoking a bunch of different things. So hours of entertainment. And of course, if you love me so much and adore me, you can subscribe right here. Click it. And until next time, as always, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay tubby.